Every day, billions of tiny invaders called pathogens, which include viruses, bacteria, and parasites, want to enter our body. Luckily, we have a powerful army of specialized organs, cells, and tissues that work together to protect us. This is our body's immune system. The immune system can be separated into the innate and adaptive immune systems. Both are closely linked and work together when a pathogen triggers an immune response. The adaptive immune system recognizes and remembers specific pathogens to generate immunity and form stronger and quicker attacks each time the same pathogen is encountered. A main component of the adaptive immune system are T cells, a type of white blood cell known as a lymphocyte. Lymphocytes protect our bodies against cancer cells and infected cells by pathogens. T cells are one of the three main types of lymphocytes. The other types include B cells and natural killer cells. T cell lymphocytes have unique proteins called T cell receptors or TCRs on their membrane surface. TCRs recognize many specific antigens. Antigens are strangers to our immune system that as a result trigger an immune response. T cells are necessary for cell mediated immunity which is immune response involving the activation of immune cells to fight infection. T cells function to actively destroy infected cells as well as to signal other immune cells to participate in the immune response. Our immune system has multiple T cells, but for the purposes of this video, we will be discussing two of the most influential players, cytotoxic T cells and helper T cells. Cytotoxic T cells are known as CD8 plus T cells because of the CD8 glycoproteins on their surface. They're constantly on the hunt for infected and cancerous cells. They recognize antigens attached to a molecule called MHC class 1. Most infected cells or pathogens express this molecule and are identified by this T cell which triggers their activation. Don't worry if this seems confusing. We'll be discussing it in more detail in the second half of this video. These cells insert perforins into the target cells. Perforins are pore-forming proteins that make holes in their target cell's membrane, where little granules are able to pass through. These act as lethal goodie bags carrying enzymes to eat away at the infectious target cells and force cell death. Next we have helper T cells, known as CD4 plus T cells, because of the CD4 glycoproteins on their cell surface. They recognize antigens with MHC class 2 molecules and are only then activated. These cells also scan for foreign antigens and orchestrate immune responses to destroy pathogens by helping in the maturation of B cells, production of antibodies, and activating cytotoxic T cells and macrophages. Now that you've been introduced to these T cells, it's time to learn how they're activated. T cells are activated by the antigens they encounter in a two signal process. Before we get into it, there's a class of white blood cells called antigen presenting cells that I want you to meet. Antigen presenting cells or APCs are like the security guards of the human body. They're conducting constant surveillance and detect any foreign invaders that don't belong. Two of the most common APCs are dendritic cells and macrophages, which are phagocytic cells that simply engulf foreign particles, sort of like a Pac-Man security guard. The process of T-cell activation begins when an APC engulfs and digests a pathogen and its specific antigens. Just like a security guard questions and writes reports on the people they catch, APCs capture important molecular information about the antigen it digests and attaches it to a structure called the Major Histocompatibility Complex Molecule, or more simply, MHC. As mentioned earlier, cytotoxic T cells recognize MHC1, whereas helper T cells recognize MHC2. The antigen MHC complex then travels to the cell membrane and is presented on the surface of the APC. Just as a key fits into one lock, each T cell has a receptor that binds to only one specific antigen. This being said, if the TCR or any helper or cytotoxic T cell 
recognizes the specific antigen MHC complex on the APC, it will bind to it. This binding is known as signal 1, which triggers the initial activation of the T cells. However, this alone is not enough to complete the activation process. Remember how I said this was a two-signal process? Well, in addition to TCR binding to antigen-loaded MHC, both helper and cytotoxic T cells require a number of secondary signals to become 100% activated and respond to the threat. This process is known as co-stimulation. In the case of helper T cells, this second co-stimulatory signal is provided by a receptor expressed on the surface of the T cell called CD28. CD28 binds to a very important molecule on the surface of the APC called the B7 protein. So why is this so important? Well, the binding of CD28 to B7 ensures the T cells are only activated by APCs which have encountered a pathogen and responded. Binding to B7 results in T cell activation, whereas a lack of binding results in cell death. Thanks to our co-stimulatory CD28B7 pair, our T cell is officially activated and the APC secretes cytokines that signal the T cell to destroy the antigen, rapidly multiply, and begin differentiation. This was a very simplified explanation of just two cells within the vast network of our immune system, so we encourage you to uncover more of its mysteries.